Hello, Mishpacha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel. Um, it is June 1st, and I just yesterday finished one of the two books that I was working on for maybe Midrash, which is an event in May hosted by Jason, Steve, Rick, and Felicia, and thank you to all of them for hosting. This has probably been the booktube event that I've participated in that I've enjoyed the most so far. Um, so anyway, so I wanted to come on here and give a sort of wrap up of my thoughts on the two books that I read for maybe Midrash. Um, so Midrash is a form of biblical commentary um, in Judaism where it's essentially explication of a passage or filling in gaps of something that's not explicitly mentioned in the text. So for example, there are Midrashim on the book of Jonah that talk about what he did and what he saw while he was in the belly of the whale for three days. Um, so that is what Midrash is. And this event asks you to pair a um, two texts that I think treat religion in some way. I think of a fiction and a nonfiction. Um, so I selected Marilyn Robinson's Gilead as my fiction pick and Pirkei Avot or Chapters of the Fathers which is a Jewish religious text for my nonfiction pick. So I'm gonna attempt some synthesis of these two. So I did finish Gilead last night. I am not yet finished with Pirkei Avot. I'm making my way through it quite slowly because as I've said before um, on this channel, and, and I think showed you, it is written in both, it has an English translation and the original Hebrew, and then it has a bunch of commentary underneath um, for each verse. So what I do is I read the English, then I read the Hebrew on each page, and then I go down and read the, the commentary. And so it's, um, so it's been sort of slow going, but I, I didn't want to rush it. I wanted to try to like take everything in from it that I could, but I have read enough that I have some thoughts about these two books um, that I would, again, now like to attempt to synthesize for you. Um, but I wanted to start off by saying a few things about both books, and since I imagine people are probably going to be more familiar with Marilyn Robinson's Gilead than with Pirkei Avot, um, I wanted to take a little bit more time to say more about Pirkei Avot. Um, so this book is, is translated as Chapters of the Fathers. Um, sometimes it's also tra translated as Chapters of Fundamental Principles. So this is a part of Jewish rabbinic literature. Um, it's a religious text, as I said, that is part of the Mishnah, which is itself part of the Talmud. So most people who know anything about Judaism have heard about the Torah, so this is an important part of the Hebrew Bible. It contains the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Um, so most people have heard of the Torah, but the Talmud consists of rabbinic interpretations of the laws found in the Torah, as well as ethical or moral principles and matters of Jewish theology. So here can I vote. Is kind of unique in that it's the only part of the Mishnah that deals solely with ethical and moral principles and doesn't discuss any interpretations of the law as um, as found in the Torah. So it's unique in that regard. Um, so the Mishnah was redacted or edited together by Judah Hanasi somewhere around the beginning of the third century of the Common Era. Um, so it goes without saying that this is quite an old book. Um, and then the sayings contained in Pirkei Avot are, are attributed to rabbis and sages um, dating from about 200 before the Common Era all the way up to about 200 of the Common Era, which was around the time that Judah Hanasi redacted the Mishnah. Um, so this contains, this book contains ethical maxims. Um, among the most well-known of these is from Rabbi Hillel, who says, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? And if I am only for myself, what am I? And if not now, when? Um, another saying from Pirkei Avot that's much beloved among American Jews, especially those who are engaged in social justice work, is um, a saying in here attributed to Rabbi Tarfon, who says, it is not up to you to complete the work, yet neither are you free to desist from it. Um, and so, although I have not finished reading this book, as I said, I have been struck how, how um, 
by how the rabbis will do a few things in here, and I think both of, and I think these things that I'm going to talk about, um, both really sort of serve or underscore the fact that this was originally an orally transmitted text, so it was not, you know, actually written down until Judah Hanasi redacted it in the third century of the Common Era, and so I think both of these things were helpful in passing this down orally um, before it was in written form. So. One of those things is listing things together in groups of three. Um, so, for example, Shimon the Just is recorded in here as saying that the world is based on three things, the Torah, serving God, and acts of loving kindness. Um, later, Shammai says to study the Torah regularly, to promise little but do much, and to receive all people with a kindly countenance. And again, I think listing things in these little groups of three probably made them easier to memorize and then pass down. Um, and then the other thing that I was struck by is the use of parallel structure in here. So when the rabbis aren't listing things in groups of three, they're utilizing parallel structure. Um, so in chapter three of this, verses 11 through 13, Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa gives several teachings using back-to-back -back parallel structure. Um, so this is, this is quoted directly from this. He in whom the fear of sin goes before his wisdom, his wisdom shall endure. But in he, he in whom wisdom precedes the fear of his sin, his wisdom will not endure. He who sins, ex so, sorry, he whose deeds exceed his wisdom, his wisdom shall endure. But he whose wisdom exceeds his deeds, his wisdom will not endure. He who is pleasing to his fellow man is also pleasing to God. And he who is not pleasing to his fellow man is also displeasing to God. So again, sort of just parallel structure of the person who does this is this, but the person who doesn't do this is this, right? Um, or the person who does the opposite is the opposite. Um, so that's what I mean by parallel structure. So that's a kind of overview of Pirkei Avot. And then I think more people are familiar with Marilyn Robinson's 2004 novel Gilead. Um, this is narrated by the elderly Reverend John Ames. It is set in 1956, and Ames is um, writing a long letter to his young son, who is about seven years old, because Ames is, at the time of this book, 76, and he has his 77th birthday um, in the course of the story, or in the course of the narrative. Um, but he knows that he's not going to live to see his son grow up, and so he wants to tell his son various things about him and he wants his son to know him and to understand him, which is the reason for the long letter. So it's a lot of musings about Ames's own life and memories that he has of his own father and grandfather and how he met, um, how he met his son's mother, Lila, um, and how they got ended up getting married because Lila is a good deal younger than uh, John Ames is. Um, and then there's also in here some reflections on events going on at present, specifically the return of Jack Boughton. So Boughton is um, the son of Ames's neighbor and oldest and closest friend, Boughton, who is also himself a minister. Um, and Jack has been gone for a number of years, and it kind of seems like Boughton is not long for the world. And so Jack um, comes home, very sort of prodigal son-like, and uh, the Reverend Ames has a lot of, you know, sort of questioning about his feelings over Jack's return, and he's really conflicted about whether he should tell his wife and his son in this letter um, about things that he knows concerning Jack Bowden's past because he feels like he's not a person of particularly high moral character. Um, so that's something that he grapples with a lot that eventually, um, I won't say how it gets resolved, but it does eventually get resolved. Um, and then uh, Marilyn Robinson, I'll, I will also say, won the Pulitzer Prize in 2005 for this novel. Well deserved, I think. Um, so, you might think that a Jewish religious text that was, you know, first sort of redacted in the third century and a, you know, 21st century novel about a Christian, you know, preacher that's set in the, you know, 1950s, you might not think that these two texts would have much to say to each other. And honestly, that's kind of what I thought when I first started reading them, but then I realized they actually have a lot more in common than you would think. 
Um, specifically relating to the notion of judgment and sort of right or correct treatment of one another. Um, so here are some things that Pierre K. Avot has to say on the subject of judgment. So chapter 1 verse 1 of Pierre K. Avot says, be cautious in judgment. Chapter 1 verse 6 instructs us to judge all men favorably. Chapter 4 verses 9 and 10, Rabbi Yishmael teaches that he who presumptuously decides the law is foolish and arrogant. And furthermore, he instructs, judge not alone, for there is only one who may judge alone, which is God, obviously. Um, so Gilead, again, like I said, is narrated by Reverend John Ames, and he really sort of struggles with his own judgment surrounding the character of Jack Bowden. Um, so there are a few things that he writes in here about judgment. So on, and this is all, this is all quotations from my edition of this book, which looks like this. So on page seven, he writes, a little too much anger too often or at the wrong time can destroy more than you would ever imagine. Above all, mind what you say. Behold how much wood is kindled by how small a fire and the tongue is a fire. That's the truth. And then later of his father, Ames writes, he could see through anyone and anything except my mother said drunkards and ne'er-do-wells. He just said, judge not. And of course, that's scripture and hard to contradict. Um, and then as I already said, Ames himself feels very conflicted about whether he should tell his son and or his wife about what he knows about Jack um, Bowden's past. And so he says, um, at some point he says, that circumstances were fairly special in young Bowden's case and by no means extenuating if I am any judge, which I am not or ought not to be according to scripture. Transgress. That is legalism. There is never just one transgression. There is a wound in the flesh of human life that scars when it heals and often enough seems never to heal at all. Avoid transgression. How's that for advice? And then, um, some other sort of parallel things that I noticed, or sort of common themes I noticed between the two of them, involved right treatment of other people. Um, so for example, Pirkei Avot in chapter 3, verse 16, Rabbi Yishmael teaches that one should receive all men with cheerfulness. And that's something that, again, Reverend Ames has a hard time doing with Jack because he feels so conflicted about what he knows about Jack's past. and. He's also sort of uncertain of why Jack has come home and what his reason is for being here and whether he's going to hurt his father and, and Ames's, you know, friend who's dying once again. Um, so on pages 140 and 141 of my edition of Gilead, Ames thinks, I must be, uh, about Jack, he, he thinks, I must be gracious. My only role is to be gracious. Clearly, I must somehow contrive to think graciously about him. When you encounter another person, when you have dealings with anyone at all, it is as if a question is being put to you. So you must think, what is the Lord asking of me in this moment, in this situation? So, again, they're sort of talking to each other, or at least to my mind, they're sort of talking to each other, um, Pirkei Avot and this novel, because, you know, you've got Pirkei Avot saying that you should not judge people and you should receive all men with cheerfulness, and then you've got... Reverend Ames thinking about how he is judging people even though he knows that he shouldn't, specifically Jack, and that he really wants to be gracious in his dealings with Jack, but he's having a hard time doing that. Um, another sort of interesting parallel I noted between them, so in Pirkei Avot in chapter, verse, chapter 4 verse 1, Ben Zoma teaches, Who is wise? He who learns from all men. Who is honored? He who honors others. And uh, Reverend Ames in Gilead uh, tells his son at some point in the novel, again on my edition, this is 159, at the root of real honor is always the sense of the sacredness of the person who is its object. And one of the things that's stressed in the commentary for Pirkei Avot is that, you know, because we are all created and all humans are created in God's image, that is the reason why you have to honor everybody because there is sort of always something to be gained from everyone. And in fact, in chapter 4, verse 3 of Pirkei Avot, Ben Azai instructs, Do not despise any man, and do not deem anything unworthy of consideration, for there is no man who does not have his hour, and no thing that does not have its place. And that is a lesson that I think 
Reverend Ames in Gilead eventually comes to learn specifically regarding uh, Jack. Um, and I will end with uh, one sort of final quotation from Gilead, and this might be slightly spoilery, so if you don't want to hear something that could be spoilery, uh, you might want to you might want to end this here. It doesn't actually say anything about anyone, but it's to me this is like one of the most important revelations that John Ames comes to, and it's quite toward the end of the book. <laughs> so anyway, so this is on 272 of my edition. This is what this is the conclusion that Reverend Ames ultimately comes to. There is no justice in love, no proportion in it, and there need not be, because in any specific instance, it is only a glimpse or parable of an embracing, inc incomprehensible reality. It makes no sense at all, because it is the eternal breaking in on the temporal. Um, so, yeah, so essentially he kind of comes to this conclusion about the nature of judgment and the nature of justice and how love sort of transcends both of those things. And that includes both the love of, say, a father for his son, but also the love of a heavenly father for his people. Um, so there you have it. That is my, that is my sort of wrap up of my maybe Midrash reading for this year and uh, my attempt at a synthesis between Pirkei Avot and Gilead. Uh, thank you for watching this. If you have thoughts about either of these books or anything I said, I would love to hear that. Please feel free to let me know that down in the comments below. Um, and again, thank you to the hosts of maybe Midrash, Jason, Steve, Felicia, and Rick. I will link all of them down below. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching this. I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whenever you're reading. And until next time, would it kill you to call your mama?